All right, well, I guess I'll just stand here. I don't need my fancy iPad now to remotely control it. Anyway, I was welcoming you guys to, to Vegas. I love coming here. Um, I've spoken at DEF CON before uh, a couple of times, and uh, it was mostly Black Hat that I've spoken at. It was like uh, 12 years running, and then I kind of got over it. Um, but I love, I love coming out to Vegas. I love to like, people watch. I got to tell you, um, the stretch pants thing is still in, apparently. And, and these people clearly don't have mirrors at home, <laughs> right? But I, gotta, I swear to God, this, this woman bought some, like, you know, the Bebe's? The Bebe jeans, and it's got the name. When I first saw it, her butt was so big, it looked like two verbs. Just, <laughs> I had, I had no, I was like, be what? <laughs> anyway, so welcome again. Um, this is, shit. <laughs> I'd like to walk around. This is uh, my wife, Birgit, and my son, whose name I won't tell you, um, because I don't trust any of you guys. <laughs> so what we're gonna talk about today is using social media as a cyber mule. And what I mean by that is using different techniques that allows me to communicate with people by using other people's resources. Um, and then we're going to, and I'll, I'll define cyber mule, and you'll see, you'll see kind of what I, what I mean by that. And we're going to look at this from the perspective of a bad guy, and what they, uh, what their goals are. I mean, I know what their goals are because I think that way. I just don't do it. Um, and uh, then what I'd like to do is kind of talk about. Uh, ways that you guys kind of get some audience participation outside of the Q&A. Um, they didn't know I was going to do that, so that might not work well, but we'll just see. But my interest is, is uh, I, uh, I contend that what I'm about to show you is undetectable. So once you see what I'm doing, you be thinking about how you can detect it. All right, so what I want to show you is what's called a spectrogram. A spectrogram is basically a graphic representation of a frequency. At this, uh, the, the spectral density of a signal, and I'll explain what spectral density is. But basically, a sound has been piped through the spectrometer, and what it does is it synthesizes graphics by the, um, by the input audio signal. And what they mean by spectral density is amplitude, and amplitude measured as a, it's displayed as a gamma of the deltas and spectral density. So that's what you're seeing with the yellow and blues here are gammas in the uh, deltas between sound. Now that's actually Monty Python. It says, uh, you know much that is hidden, oh Tim. Quiet. So one of the things that this is used for is the application uh, for profoundly deaf people, uh, it allows them to have a visual representation of an audio signal, and it helps them to, to better uh, hear and reproduce and speak and things of that nature. So here's an actual example of one. We're going to take an audio frequency and we're going to convert it into graphics. Now, I think you can see the little line 
over here. Um, what this graph represents, the horizontal is time. The vertical is frequency. And the amplitude, as I said, is represented by the gammas of the deltas and the phi kappas. <laughs> so here, let's play that. All right, so you could see, you can pretty much see the drum hits, right? And you can see how the frequencies spike going up. Um, down below, those are lower frequencies and they're pretty much straight because we can't hear those frequencies and the bass drum doesn't, uh, doesn't produce sound at that frequency. Uh, if I was to break this into 4-4 four, four time, you can see now we have these individual lines. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that this shows how the Ramones don't have that good timing whenever they play. Uh, so the AO, let's go, you can kind of see it. The first, the first guy here is AO, let's go, AO, let's go. So you can kind of, you can kind of see how someone who can't hear could identify this with a visual application. And so, again, you'll see it. Play. I, oh, let's go. I, oh, let's go. Right, so if you guys could see that, that's what I was talking about with the, uh, with the Ramones there. So, when, as you can see by this graph, those sound frequencies are being synthesized. And it is a factor of the equipment or the spectrometer that can give a different representation of spectral density. Let's think of that as resolution, sound resolution, right? Um, depending on, in your regular monitor, you have to have a monitor that can support high resolution. If we have a spectrometer, that can analyze frequencies closer together, like 24-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit sampling, then it would have a better range of spectral densities. So since these are gammas, or I'm sorry, since these are deltas, you can kind of see we're basically dealing with blue and yellow, right, because they're a delta. Uh, and in this case, the blue is representing some level of silence or the background, what the, the, the blue is the mean frequency of silence. God, I feel like Paul Simon all of a sudden. Um, any, any old people in here got that? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so there's a flip side to this. If we can take an audio signal and feed it into a spectrometer to get a graphic display, why can't we take a graphic and feed it into the spectrometer and freak it out and see if we can produce a sound? So what, we've, what I've done here is I've drawn, see that's outstanding artwork, isn't it? See, if I like die later on from whatever it is I'm going to do, this is going to be worth money. <laughs> so here I've basically drawn from the top left, which is the highest frequency, that's about 20,000 kilohertz. 20,000 hertz, 20 kilohertz. Yes. And there, and there we have time. So let's take a listen uh, at this guy. I love that part, it's just awesome. 
It feels like I'm going into something, you know? So, as you can see, in this semi, uh, I, was, I was trying to draw it diagonally, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> you could tell my state of mind at the time. <laughs> um, the, the spectral density here is very tight, right? Because the source was a graphic. In the, when the source was a audio frequency, the synthesized spectral density was fuzzy and, and, and grainy like we saw. Whenever the original is a graphic, here it is, you know, the perfectly uh, separated gammas or deltas of the gamma. And it's not, the term gamma is used even though it's not really gamma. What gamma really is, is a voltage difference from your old cathode ray tubes and luminescence created based on a voltage input. That's what a real uh, gamma is. But what we're calling gamma here is the difference in color. And you can kind of see the blue outline. But we have a straight on middle yellow, a little bit fuzzy, and the blue. So if we look at the data map for this guy, as we've said, the vertical axis is our frequency. Huh? See that? <laughs> Horizontal is time, and the amplitude is by the, the, the gammas. So that, this is all solid because I drew it that way, which means the amplitude is right on. That's a solid yellow because compared to silence, silence is blue, that's solid yellow. There was no other sound. So, now I'm gonna draw something a little bit more complex. So rather than just a line, I have multiple points this is, again, me trying to draw a straight line. I don't know what I was doing there. So uh, now, rather than just one basic uh, um, Get out of here. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Thank you. Good night. So if you noticed where we have really solid yellow, we didn't hear much, we, we, we heard static because it represents like a full frequency range of noise all at the same amplitude. But once we were doing the variations, then we could see up and down and blah, 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 blah. Right, so this, these are some examples of the flip side where we're feeding, or I, I, not, I didn't feed it anything, I drew the graphic and then created a wave file. Now, what, so what, right? Here we are. What does this have to do with Facebook and CyberMule? Goals for a bad guy are that they don't want to get caught, right? None, none of us want to get caught. If you do get caught, don't have anything on you. No riding dirty, right? So, and in this case, what we're doing, we're, we're talking about covert communications or information, right? We don't want the, I, I don't want the information on my person because the, the law enforcement will get it. I want to be able to communicate, like with that, we want to communicate undetected. That's kind of the big one. 
right? If I make a cell phone call, I got a frequency going through the, through the air. You know, if I send an email, we've got data going along the wire. So we want to communicate in a way that is undetected, hopefully. I don't need any money trail, right? So I want access to this data for free. And hell, why not? I want that data backed up. I want my covert message backed up. And I want it available anywhere in the world. And we call that Facebook. <laughs> so the ramifications here, if I can like divert just for a second, is I can put all of my data on Facebook and I don't own it anymore, right? It's not mine. I'm not going to get in trouble for it. They might say, well, you know, track my IP like in CSI or whatever. But I stop owning that data and they take care of it all for me. In fact, I can put ACLs on it, right? I can have certain people who can see it. Now, obviously, if law enforcement gets involved on the other end, or if I type the word destroy in an email, then they're going to have access to that data. But insofar as a bad guy, Facebook is kind of the perfect vehicle for us to be able to exchange information. So we've got a bad guy persona and, and this is actually somebody who's on Facebook. Uh, Johnny Long insisted that I use this guy. I don't know why. But uh, here's the bad guy. His name is Mr. Poon Tang. <laughs> what? Y'all know him or something? So... Law enforcement's got a whiff of poontang, right? They know. <laughs> what? And they want to stick it to poontang. And they want, you know, law enforcement wants poontang because, let's face it, they're law enforcement and it's really hard for them to get poontang. <laughs> so, here we have. He's on the run, we need comms, offload storage, redundant, free, ACLs, global access. So what we have here is Poon Tang was at a waterfall with Kevin Bacon. They're hanging out. It actually was Kevin Bacon, I put it on there, and it's like he didn't remove it. It's probably just some kid named Kevin Bacon. But anyway, it's still up there. And so I'm just gonna post this video. Now, there is a little hint in this next video that I want you to, to listen to. You might want to sit on the volume, sir, because I, it might be a little loud, because it's a waterfall. The water's like hitting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here's the waterfall. Um, this is actually my wife and I at Snoqualmie. Snoqualmie? What? Snoqualmie. You right there? You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Snoqualmie was like, oh my that. God, they caught up to me. <laughs> so what she said. <laughs> so. You can turn it up a little bit more.
Okay, one that I shot that video, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Almost as good as my drawing. So, did anybody get the hint? Did you hear something different? Huh? Well, so you heard something up on the front end, and then where I loaded that, you heard like just the waterfall sound, right? And so I did that on purpose just so as you could, you could see the difference in what we're doing here. So I'm going to rip that analog, <clears throat> well, it's a digital signal, but I'm going to rip the audio off of Facebook and I'm going to analyze it. Now, we can see here that my signal changed where it's like regular waterfall. You can actually see a change in the decibel level, right? But what's interesting is that it maintains pretty much the same decibel level, decibel level, decibel level in each little segment. Note the spectrogram. All right, sorry, I couldn't take it anymore. All right, so there's a couple of things that we want to look at with this guy. The dB level drops right there, as I said, whenever we hear the real waterfall sound. We have a consistent dB level on the bottom where uh, each, I'm going to call it the segment, was playing back. But we have a clipping at 10,000 hertz. Does anyone know why that would be? You know, I don't know why I ask because I can't hear shit. <laughs> yes, whatever you said. Um, Facebook processes audio and video into their format once you post that video. That was actually posted to Facebook. I mean, I don't just make this stuff up. That's Go look up Poontang and you'll see that video. In fact, friend Poontang. I'm around. What? That makes me Poontang. So, we rip the audio a couple of ways. I used screen Flow, which is a Mac application that allows you to capture your screen and all. <laughs> JD, my man. Say hello to JD, everybody. JD. Um, yeah, I do the same thing. Oh, see, I'm over him already. Um, so that allows us to record as if it were a virtual audio cable. And then, of course, we have a virtual audio cable product called uh, Audio Hijack Pro. If you have a sound blaster, you can all, it's the what you hear interface. So anything that you're playing is you can record whatever that, uh, that audio is. So now that I've ripped that audio, I'm going to take it and rather than drawing my spectrogram, and processing that into sound like we've seen, I'm going to push the audio in to see what the spectrogram looks like. Am I, is my mouse moving? Yep. So it's going to load from the bottom. And so this is that waterfall sound.
Wait for it. Look at that. So if you guys can't see this, let's tweak this image a little bit. That image up at the top was a synthesized graphic being illustrated in spectral density that allows me to recreate a map of Beirut in the waterfall sound. Yeah, hell yeah! Um, I've got the coordinates 31.607, blah, blah, blah. Um, it says Beirut here. You can make out the roads. Um, it's the level of detail that you can represent is outstanding. So let's look at it the, uh, the other side. Remember when I said that the waterfall was the real waterfall? I lied. That was the real waterfall. As our enemies have found that we can reason like men, so let them find that we can fight like men. Thomas Jefferson, amen. <laughs> so, The implications of something like this are pretty far-reaching. The ability to embed spectral density graphics in an analog frequency, which can be transferred anywhere, is pretty awesome. Now, in this case, the bad guy has to have a computer which he probably will somewhere, but that computer on the net accessing Facebook. Probably not the smartest thing to do whenever you are accessing covert data sources, right? But, I mean, they're, I mean nobody's gonna know it's there. Um, so, what I did here was, and I know you can't see it back there very well, um, Every, here, come on up here. The, this is me holding my cell phone up to the speaker and recording it. So that's the equivalent of going into a cyber cafe, playing my little video, recording it, and then taking it back offline and doing whatever I want with it. It doesn't look like much in these guys, but maybe along the bottom you can kind of make out those the letters in there. Um, there is an art to designing the input graphic in such a way that you can mess with the gamma ratios um, and you can change some of the algorithms and it uses, a, there's some different logarithmic functions that you can apply during the generation of the, uh, the gammas. But that was just base right off the top, no processing. So, and up at the top, the, that one's no good, right? The, the top one, that's the map of Beirut again. I have not been able to get that right. However, this bottom one, and again, this is a cell phone recording the damn thing off of a speaker. The cell phone one is, is pretty good. So, can you, can anyone kind of guess why? Good. So, let's take this a step further. So that's a little squiggly line, and up at the top it says, this is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. So, 
If you notice, that's awesome, the blank white background and the black lettering is the strongest contrast that I can get right now. But also notice the positioning of that uh, of that sentence. It's placed at the very top of the document so it will map over to coordinates in a frequency range that humans can't hear. So earlier with that lower, that's why Beirut screwed up a little bit because it's a lower frequency, it takes a lot of room and thus you could actually hear, you, you could hear it. There was something like a flange sound that you probably picked up on. And that's because I was, you're trying to saturate that signal. Now, if I was only processing the graphic, the, the Beirut image, it would have come out fine. But what I had to do was layer those sounds together and then pull the waterfall back and pull the graphic sound up enough to where you could read it but still have it sound halfway decent so that you don't know immediately um, that something's up. So if we take that, we're going to reverse the process again. This is straight off the bat, that white and the little graphic. Now white is still a sound. So here's what this sounds like. Couple of things. One, the whole spectrum just sounds fine, right? And that was the waterfall sound. In this case, if I wanted to hide that sound, I'd have to find something that I could hide it in something that sounds like a waterfall, which is why I chose it. That's why we drove all the way out there. Actually, there was another reason. So, the other thing that you'll see is the frequency range goes all the way up to 20 kilohertz. It's not clipped at the 10 that Facebook clips it whenever they're processing audio because there's no reason for them to take up more data whenever they know people can't hear it. So let's do something that's a little different. Now I'm going to play. Huh? That was it playing. So let's do that again. So watch the spectrometer. And you'll see all of the frequency has been filtered because I have a high pass filter right there at the end that is only going to allow about 12.5 to 20,000 kilohertz through. So that's filtered down. And I know that since my graphic is up at the top, it's going to be at around the 20K level, right? So if I go down just enough and put in whatever graphic I want, we can reproduce, reproduce? New word. Reproduce. Thank you. I did. I didn't know what you were doing for a minute there. I thought Rain Man came down here or something. I wasn't. <laughs> You're like, eh. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry. So, um, I was saying something. <laughs> what? <laughs> so um, the. the Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So the high pass filter pulls everything down. And the interesting thing here is that the decibels stayed the same. And that's something that you need to keep in mind here, is that though we can't hear it, you can see that it keeps a good, and the level down here is, is lower, and we're not peaking, but it still has a decent decibel level. And so there we have a, uh, and I can, uh, I can put this on any video, I could put this anywhere, YouTube or anything like that. I couldn't put this one on Facebook, but I could put it on a website anywhere. And I think the, the fact that I can have something you can't hear, I can put messages that you can't hear somewhere on the web that you would never know were there and that you could read perfectly fine. And that is using Facebook as your cyber mule. And that's the show, ladies and gentlemen.